Hi guys, it's Stacy Coward coming back to you. I am in Portsmouth, Virginia. I'm in London Oaks um, in this area over here, purposely filming over here. I want to talk to you today about the process of change and what that process looks like and what it takes in order to um, change. Oftentimes when I'm talking to people and doing my counseling or mentoring, um, one of the questions that I ask is, is this your rock bottom? And what does it take for you to get to a place where it is your rock bottom? How much more is it gonna take? You know, because I hear all kinds of stories that they've been through this and that, and this has happened and that has happened and this has happened. And most of the stuff that you would think would tell the, the, the uh, a person to say, I'm, I'm done, I'm not doing anymore. Oftentimes um, you find people who are having difficulty changing, um, staying in those same places. And the question um, that comes along is, well, how much does it take? You know, what else has to happen before you come to a place and you're like, ah, I want to change my life. Well, here are some things that I found that have really been helpful and effective in helping me to get people to understand that process. So the, qu the first question is, what cost are you willing to pay so that you can get the benefit? At what cost? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to put the time in, the effort in, the energy in so that you can get past this place? That's one of the first things that we see. Helping people to really get past um, their issue because they're willing to put whatever it takes in to get it. The second thing that I found is being able to allow that person to have support while they are transitioning. And then the third thing is when they get over to the other side and they've effectively got across and you've effectively been able to help them to transition, um, giving them the information to stay on that side because they get over there and they don't know, they don't have the right tools and resources to be able to work on that side of the fence because they've been so used to working on this side of the fence. So when you think about, you know, how do I help somebody? I've got a family member, I've got a niece, I've got, you know, a daughter or a child, somebody in my family that I really, really love and I really want to see them transition and do better with their lives. And you want to help them to change. Well, the first thing you need to do is if they will not allow you to help them, they can't help you. So you sort of have to take your hands off for a while. Keep, keep them up, prayed up with God in the whole nine yards, take your hands off because until they get enough, there's nothing you can do. But when you get that person who is broken and wounded and sick and tired, go in. Go in as quickly as you get, can and rescue them. And when you rescue them, you wanna rescue them with support. Go in and say, okay, well, what can I do to help you here? What can I do to help you here? Go in and start fixing those broken areas for them and be a support system in place for them. And then the third thing, as you are helping to support them over to the other side, when they get over there, make sure they have all the tools they need to succeed, i.e. it might help them to get through a certificate program that's like one week long. It may get getting them in some counseling where somebody can help them to deal with all that, that baggage from yesteryear. It may be helping them to get signed up for the military, helping them to get signed up for college, helping them to get into a substance abuse program, helping them to have as many informational resources as they possibly can so that they can pick up a new set of tools to work with so um, with that being said the process of change um, first of all recognizing whether or not that person is ready to be helped to be changed secondly providing the support that they need to be able to be changed support 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 when they are ready that is your job family members mamas daddies cousins those, that's your job then to go in and say I'll watch the baby for you or I'll be there to support you or I'm gonna pick you up and drop you off at school for the next six weeks or so support build them up and then the final step is fill them up with as much information as we possibly can give them 